Hey, thanks for coming by. So I have a very small YouTube channel and I wanted to share what I've learned and what I'm struggling with and some of the challenges that I'm running into growing on YouTube uh, for other small accounts. Um, you know, I've got a recording studio downstairs. I've got good equipment. I do a podcast up here, which is one of the mics I'm using now. I've got good equipment. Um, the issue I think I'm running into, which might be a challenge for other people that are trying to do what I'm doing is I don't have one thing that I do. And I take a lot of pride in that. But also what that means is that people that subscribe to this channel don't know what to expect. And that's pretty bad for growing a channel on YouTube. So I'll have a video on AI and then I'll have a video of how to sample a record. And then I'll have a video of one of my art projects. And then I'll have a video of my new music that I just put out. So why, or fixing my truck <laughs> or the biggest video I have, which is fixing a lawnmower. So that's really not what you're supposed to do on YouTube. You're supposed to do one thing really well and just continue doing that. And you can do a couple other things, but they should be somewhat related. So I think creators that are doing what I'm doing really struggle um, to grow an audience. I just found out one trick that I'll share at the end of this video that might help uh, not alienate your current subscribers um, and gather new subscribers that are from a different area that is one of your interests. So I'll share that at the end. Um, I do think that it's still okay to have a channel that does all sorts of different things. It almost becomes like a blog, which is fine, I think. And it's just a little bit jarring for some people that might have subscribed, especially for the MPC1 sampling audio sampling videos and record sampling videos that I've done when I put up a video fixing a truck and they're like, why am I following this guy? <laughs> so um, I'll share the trick that I learned uh, later in the video. Uh, but for now, let's just go through my actual channel and I'll show you my analytics and I'll show you some of the things that I've learned. So here's my channel. And as you can see, 779 subscribers. Um, I'll show you the amount of watch hours and everything else. Um, I do have a lot of the videos that I've put up, the long form videos are included in this number, but there's 139 videos, which seems like a lot. A lot of those are shorts and I've attempted shorts and it's been an interesting trial, uh, by fire. I did download the vidIQ information, uh, that they'll, that it is helpful. It gives you some information about what your analytics are and how you're doing. Um, so it's something that I utilize, but, um, one thing to note is that your actual watch hours that's shown up here in the vidIQ is going to include shorts. So you have to go to a different section to actually find what your real monetization hours are towards your goal. So, and most people know this, but I'll repeat it. In order to get monetized on YouTube and get some ad revenue, you have to have a thousand subscribers and you have to have 4,000 watch hours uh, in the last 12 months. And then you can get monetized. So what that shakes out to is I think 13 or so hours a day um, that your videos are being watched, your videos are being watched. There's a way to do it with shorts, but um, you need like 10 million views. So, but I'll show you that panel now just to show you where my progress is. So we'll go to YouTube studio. We want to go to the earn money <laughs> tab there and it'll show you how and how you can get monetized on YouTube. And so again, this is in YouTube studio. There's so much you can just dig into the analytics forever. Um, but here's where I'm at. So eligibility, right? So how, how do you know if you're eligible? And what I'm really shooting for is the, the big one, you know, the thousand subscribers and the 4,000 watch hours. I'm at 2080 for the last 365 days, 2080 hours, which is exactly the amount of hours you work if you do a 40 hour a week job. Interesting. Uh, 2080. So if you ever, side note, if you ever want to just discover how much an annual salary is when they just give you a dollar amount, so it's $25 an hour, just multiply by 2080 and you will know what your salary quote unquote is. Uh, little side note there. So you've got 2000 watch hours, 779 subscribers. I thought I'd get to the watch hours faster than, than the subs. And it's been the inverse of that. So I've got the 500 subscribers is their limit for this eligibility. And then I have 2000 watch hours. You need 3000 for this tier or you need 3 million shorts views, which
which is not happening for me. <laughs> and then the other option is the larger, you know, monetization is the thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours or 10 million shorts views. So hopefully that's helpful for people. Um, so what I've realized by going through this process is that um, it's not easy. So I've got TikTok accounts that have thousands. One of them has 63,000 followers. One of them has 3,000 followers. Uh, Instagram accounts, 2,800 on one of them, 2,900 on another one. Uh, so I'm like decent at social media. YouTube is a totally different animal. Uh, so it's a real challenge and it's been way harder than I thought to actually get to the numbers. Um, and I got sort of lucky in that the first video I really posted, which I'll show you, was the lawnmower video. So the lawnmower video that got me all these, all these views, but that actually opened my eyes to the fact that I might be able to actually get monetized if I figure this out. So let's go to my videos and uh, I'll show you. Well, we can just go to the popular videos. You can see there's the for you recommendations. Um, but the most popular video I have is the Cub Cadet uh, solenoid location and fix video. That was three years ago, 43,000 views. It's a nine minute video. Uh, the other two that have done really well uh, are the MPC one audio, uh, you know, basically mixing and sampling with MPC one. Those have done well. If I just did those, and just did a lot of those, I think I'd already be at the goal, but I've got a lot of other things that I like to do. And so the other one, 7,800 views a year ago, I posted this on how to smoke a pipe, <laughs> um, how to fix the fan in my forerunner, 1,300 views. Um, but it just kind of goes down from there. You know, my recording studio, I did a video on that. Uh, guitar theory, uh, how to string a, a painting. <laughs> so all sorts of random things. Uh, my new music video, 302 views. What can you do? You know, it's sort of hard to say how all this works and, and what is going to actually take off. Uh, but I'm having fun doing it. And it's something that it's a passion project for me. I'm not doing this to make a ton of money. I'm not making any money, but I'm not doing this to make money. Uh, I'm doing it because I enjoy it. And I like sharing the things that I find cool and interesting. Um, so anyways, you know, the way I set up my page, which I think is important for any small YouTuber is to, instead of just letting your uploads just like pile up in one row is to, you know, follow these guidelines and put different things on your page that people can focus on. So I've got a playlist for music videos. I shared that on the page. I wanted my popular videos to show up. I wanted my most recent videos to show up, my playlist to show up. And then I put shorts at the bottom because shorts are so hit or miss and they don't really do a whole lot for me. Um, they're fun though. So there's that. So if you want to reorganize your page so that it has some semblance of, you know, showing the things that you want to show first, if somebody does click on your page, you go to the customized channel. And when you customize the channel, you can set up certain things. Um, so channel customization layout is where you're going to set up these different categories. And it's really pretty easy to do. So I want my new music video to show up for people who haven't subscribed first up top and for returning subscribers. I want them to see that video. So I put those two up top. So they're either already subscribed and they're going to see it or they're coming to the channel for the first time and then they're going to see it up top. Uh, then you can turn off the for you recommendations um, so that people aren't going to see that uh, when they go to your page. I leave it on because in general, I'd say that YouTube does a pretty good job of uh, showing people what they're interested in. I also use those a lot for end screen where I just say recommend the video unless it's really clear. Like the MPC ones, I usually just put the next MPC one video up. But for ones that are sort of all over the map, I just put on recommend the best video for this viewer and hopefully it'll give them something that they want to click on. Uh, and I always put the subscribe button up there too. Um, and I'll show you how to do that too. It's not too hard. And if you want to add a section, it's really pretty easy. Uh, you can click the add section button right here and you can add a playlist or you can add multiple playlists. Uh, you can add featured channels. So if you've got another channel that you want to feature, you can put that on there. Uh, you can do, I already have basically all of these set up on there, just order differently. If you want to change the order, you just literally grab that little button and move it around. So that's easy to reorder those things. Uh, other recommendations that I think are important is that you go to the branding and you make sure that you've got 
an avatar and you've got a background for your, your banner. Uh, I don't use the watermark, but you can add your logo as a watermark. That'll just show up on all your videos. And then you've got your basic information, which is important because you've got room to put a tagline up top below your name. And what I have is, you know, description, artist, musician, brick and mortar shop owner. I refuse to only do one thing on YouTube, which is why I'm not growing on YouTube, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, then you've got your channel, channel URL, and then you can add your links. So when somebody clicks on your page, they can click on these different links. I've got a link tree. I've got my Spotify. I've got my Instagram. Uh, and then you can add your email so people can email you. So let's see what that looks like on the actual page. So we'll go to the page. And I'll show you where those things are. So we're going to your channel. And then you can see I do have this set to autoplay uh, when somebody gets to the page. So that tagline is right here that we put in the description. You have to click to see the second part where all the information pops up. So you can see the, the link tree. Uh, I, you know, I refuse to only do one thing. Uh, Spotify, Instagram, uh, my email address, uh, and then the subscribers, amount of videos, total views. So 202,000 total views. Uh, I joined in April of 2020. So I've been doing this four years and I still haven't gotten to a thousand subscribers. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? And again, I, I know there's ways to do this that would be easier, but they're a little more boring to me. I want to just keep doing this, whatever I want to do on here. And that might hurt the growth of the account and that's fine. But uh, ultimately I, I see it as doing this for fun. And if it turns into something great, but I'm ultimately doing this for fun and to promote my music and my art and everything like that and just show people what I can do. Uh, so anyways, that's a little quick overview of the page. Um, and you never really know what videos are going to do really well or not. It's sort of, you can, if you've got it really down, you can. But uh, I feel like from what I've seen is that people will put a ton of time into a video and then post it and it does okay. And then the one that they least expected would blow up really blows up. Um, so anyways, I'll show you the, I told you, I'd tell you a, a secret at the end. So let's just go to one of the videos. We'll go to the one that I posted yesterday, 32 views. What can you do? Your videos view on the left. And then I'm going to just edit and I'll show you the end screen stuff that you can do. So, you know, I've got the description and all these different links and everything and hashtags thumbnail for this. I just let it generate its own. Uh, and that was fine for this one. Usually I create a thumbnail, but I'm trying to change it up and see, um, you know, you add in what, what you want this to rank for is AI sentient is what I put it, what I want it to rank for. You know, it's public, uh, the end screens. So when you're posting a new video, make sure you utilize end screens. If you have other videos, you want people to be able to click on them if they make it that far. Um, so we'll go to the end screen tab here. You can edit them later too. So what I have on this video is just best for viewer and subscribe. And you can change those to different things. You can change it to a playlist or you can change that tab to a specific video. You can say how long you want that to run. You know, if you don't want it going for that long at the end of the video, you can shorten it. So there's a lot of things you can do with end screens, but use them. Um, that's what I would say. So I'm going to discard those changes. You can also add cards into the video that are time stamped, like Hey, check out this video over here. So here's, here's the trick that I told you I'd tell you about. And then I'll show you my analytics um, in a second as well. But the trick that I've found out about is something that you can't change after the video is posted, but you can change it when you're actually posting. So you can see there's tags. I would recommend using tags, obviously. In vidIQ, you can copy them from other videos that are similar to yours. So you can copy somebody else's tags and put it right in yours. So that's a nice little assist. Um, vidIQ actually recommends different tags too. There's a lot you can do here, but this is what I'm talking about. Um, there's two things. You can use the standard YouTube license or you can use the Creative Commons uh, for the licensing. If you use Creative Commons and somebody, that means somebody can use your video for their own purposes. Um, I think that's fine at this point in what I'm doing. If somebody wants to use something that's in one of my videos, I'm okay with that because it's going to promote what I'm trying to do. And at least somebody, hopefully they tag me in it. 
Uh, but it's something that I don't really have a big problem with at this point. If things change, maybe I won't do that. But uh, so that's one. But the big one is publish to subscriptions feed and notify subscribers. So what that means is, and right now it's grayed out and it's clicked that it's on because I already posted this and I activated that when I posted it. So what's nice about that is if I make a video that is totally bonkers, has nothing to do with anything else I've done before, um, I'm actually going to start using this often so that I don't want my subscribers that are there for lawnmower videos or for music editing, I don't want them to see this crazy video that has nothing to do with why they subscribe to my channel. I want new people to see that video. I want new people to see it and be like, oh, I like what this guy is talking about, so I'm going to follow uh, that and subscribe to that, that page. Now, when they've subscribed, then eventually those vi other videos I've made will pop up and then they might say, oh, I really don't really care about a lot of that stuff, so I'm going you know, to unsubscribe. Fine. That's fine if they do that. But hopefully they don't. And hopefully they're like, oh, man, this guy does this other stuff that I dig, and I like what he's doing. Cool. Awesome. So I think that's a nice little trick that you can post it so it doesn't go to your subscribers. If it's something that I've done a lot of successful videos about already, like the MPC one, I would leave it on because I do know that I've gotten a lot of subscribers from – MPC one videos and so I would want them to see those, but, um, otherwise if it's totally bonkers, you know, it's about, you know, why pizza is so good or something. I want a different audience to see it. And I don't want to, if, if it's somebody that subscribed to me for lawnmowers, I don't want them to see it and not click on it because the algorithm thinks that they want to see what I'm posting because they're subscribed, but they're not there to see pizza videos. They're there to see lawnmower videos so they're not going to click on it and it's going to hurt. It's going to make it look like the video is not as successful as it could look. If it's fresh eyes of people that love pizza, I want people that love pizza to see that video. Um, so that's a little trick. So let's get into the analytics. So let's see, last 28 days, 7,600 views, but that includes shorts. So again, the, the earn money is going to show you your actual what they're qualifying as hours watched. The analytics is going to include shorts, which is, I think, silly that they do that because it's not showing you a real number. Um, total watch hours, watch time uh, this past 28 days, 232 hours, and I got 35 subscribers in the last month. Um, so not bad. It's Usually I get about 30 subscribers a month at this point or so. So and it actually tells you that's six more than usual in 28 days. Um, so not stellar, but still, you know, doing okay building. Uh, the audience in general, I had 6,300 unique viewers. Um, so you can just dig into this. And if you go into advanced mode, you can just go nuts with the analytics. But I won't do that. I won't bore you with that. But let's look at the last 365 days. So you can see that the, all those little spikes are shorts. You know, I, and maybe one of them was a, a actual full-length video, but typically those spikes of, you know, 3,000 views in a day are always shorts. And shorts don't really get me anything. They might get me a few subscribers here and there, but those subscribers are sort of like a weaker subscription because they don't really know anything about your channel. And if your next video is something they don't like, they're usually gone. Um Shorts are funny because I'll post them and then I'll get really weird analytics for the first like seven hours. And then all of a sudden, like I'll have 40 likes on something and no, or I'll have like a hundred views. And I'm like, that's definitely not right. I didn't have a 40% like to view ratio. And then the number of views just like catches way up. And then it's like, oh, it had 1400 views and I got 40 likes. Okay. And then the next day it'll go down to like 33 likes and then 2,000 views. And I'm like, what happened to those likes? <laughs> How'd they get deleted? And I guess they qualify likes by the account that did it. And if they think it's a real account, a real person or whatever. But when I post a short, I have, I'm not paying somebody to go watch it. So I don't know what's going on. But I guess they just don't have all these, uh, all these accounts aren't created equal as far as whether or not they count this stuff. So I had 93,737 views in the last year. Um, 2,400, again, 2,400 is the watch hours, including shorts. 
So it's, you know, steady. It's not going up much. It's starting to go up a little bit, but not much. So let's look at lifetime. So you can see I didn't really start pursuing this much um, until, let's see, 2022. Um, I should have taken advantage of the pandemic, but I, I didn't really. Um, so you can see most of the activity is, is towards this time of uh, in the past year and a half. Uh, but so I posted the video of the lawnmower and it did okay. And then all of a sudden spring hit. <laughs> oh, okay. So that video did really well in spring because everyone's lawnmower broke and you get this bell and then it goes back down in the winter. But what I realized is that's happening every year. So I, every year that lawnmower video in the spring and throughout the summer starts getting a lot of views and then it goes back down. So I'm like, all right, well, I should try to leverage that um, to be able to hit at the same time to try to get to that 4,000 watch hours. So I'm trying to get a lot of watch hours at this point to build towards April where the peak of the lawnmower video will then add with the cumulative amount that I'm getting on new videos to hopefully get to 4,000 watch hours. We'll see. Uh, but then I added some other videos that did pretty well, you know, over 10,000 views on uh, two of them, I think. Or one's at 9,500, the other one's at 12,000. And, uh, and then the pipe smoking one, I was surprised. That one got 7,600 views or so. And that one's going pretty strong, actually. It seems like that's just going to continue to do well. And that's sort of a evergreen, they call that, an evergreen video, because it's not related to something that's going to go away. It's always going to be there. Whereas the MPC1 videos, the MPC1 might just be, come out of favor and people don't use it anymore at some point. But people are always going to smoke pipes. So that's an evergreen video, as they call it, all the cool kids. Uh, subscribers, you can see I got a bunch uh, during that MPC1 video. I got 30 in one day. That was a lot, December 2022. I don't know why it's not showing the video was posted below it, but I, I, it was definitely related to, um, to that post, I believe. But you can see the subscribers going up over time. You know, it's steady. And then I lose subscribers here and there. But it really only did I start really pursuing it in December or so of 2022, where I was like, all right, I could potentially get there and keep adding things that I think are cool, and hopefully it'll grow. So 257,000 views total uh, on the channel since 20, April of 2020. And it's been a slog, you know. And again, if I really focused on one thing, then I would probably be there already. And that's sort of people, what most people probably that are smarter than me would do is that if they had multiple passions, they would build multiple channels. Um, I might do that someday, but I really don't think I will. So I could make one for my art. I could make one for my music. I could make one for my businesses. I've got an art gallery and a, a recording studio and a shirt printing company that I just launched. So I've got a lot of stuff going on and you should probably make a channel for each one. Um, I did do that for the podcast. The Cape and Islands podcast has its own page. Uh, the record label that I have, Safe Harbor Records, has its own YouTube page. But it's it just takes so much to build those up that, um, uh, you know, it's hard. It's not easy. So in summary, for anybody, first of all, if this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Uh, leave a comment if this helped you. That means a lot. And um, in general, Hopefully this helps you if you're trying to grow and, and you're not alone if you're struggling. <laughs> and if you're trying to grow your channel and it's hard, it, yeah, it is. It is. And, and it's going to get even harder with AI now. So, uh, but just keep working at it. And there's a lot of things I know I could do better. And I just, at this point, feel like I'm trying different things every time I post a video and see what starts to work. Uh, but the main thing is if you're genuine and you're putting out things that you care about, it will eventually happen. So thank you again for watching and hopefully this was helpful and have a great rest of your day.